it's normal for new drivers to struggle to judge if it's safe to change lane when they check their mirrors. They look in the mirrors and they see cars and they see lanes, but it takes time to develop the judgment to know how far away those cars are. But there are some tips that can help. To get the most out of my advice, you're going to need to set your mirrors up in this way. Firstly, the interior mirror. You wanna see the whole of that rear window in the interior mirror. If the mirror is too small, try and get the middle of the window in the middle of the mirror so that you can see equally towards both sides because you change lanes towards both sides. Now, your wing mirrors, also known as your door mirrors or your side mirrors. We're not bird watching, so we don't want to be looking up. Neither do we want to be looking down because then we can't see cars coming up behind, particularly if it's uphill behind. You wanna be looking straight back. Some people say about half ground, half sky, but often there's buildings and trees in the way. So buildings, trees, that counts as sky. If you're close to a building or tree, you're really not gonna be able to do it this way. But generally speaking, most people can judge if the mirror is looking straight up or down. Get it looking straight. As for the side, you don't wanna be seeing too much of the car. A little bit of the car like I have now, but not like this. Because if you can see too much car, well, you've got a massive blind spot. Some people say, move it away so that you can't see any of your car, then you have less of a blind spot. That's true, but particularly for beginners, it's really hard to judge where cars are in relation to themselves. If you can see a little bit of your car, then it's easy to place other cars on the road in relation to yourself. I'd say about this is right. And then for the other mirror, try and get exactly the same thing, looking straight back and as little car as possible whilst you can still see your car. If you can see the whole of the front of the car in the interior mirror, then you have space to move in front of them. However, you may not have time because if they're coming up fast, it's best to let them pass. But if they're doing about the same speed as you, then you have space to move in front of them. Your interior mirror is actually better at judging if you can change lane than your wing mirrors because your wing mirrors make cars look further behind. However, it's important to use your wing mirrors as well because they may see a car next to you that the interior mirror doesn't see. It's best to use your mirrors in pairs but primarily use your interior mirror to judge if you have enough distance to move in front of the car behind. But when you're driving a van, you can't use your interior mirror. Often you don't have one. So you have to use your wing mirror. When it comes to trying to judge if you have enough distance in your wing mirror, divide your mirror up into two halves. What's in the bottom half is definitely too close. What's in the top half is far enough away, but you may still not have time. Depends how quickly they're approaching you. If they're approaching you quickly, let them pass but if they're doing about the same speed as you or approaching you very slowly, then you have space to move in front of them. Like this silver car now, they're doing about the same speed as me. No, actually, I'll take that back. They are catching me now, so I will let them pass. But if they're doing the same speed as me, I would have moved in front of them then. And I'm catching a slow moving lorry in front of me, so I may not have an opportunity for a while to change lane. If that's the case, you do just have to wait black car seems to be going a similar speed to me but I'm too close to the red car in front of me and that's another thing you can't change lane when you're close to the car in front you don't want to go directly into the lane directly behind the car in front you need a little bit of space and a safe gap to move into before you make the lane change sometimes you do just have to wait in a slower moving lane until it's safe to make the change so this black car is in the top half of my mirror, so I do have space. And now they're getting closer. And now they're coming into the bottom half of the mirror, so I definitely don't have space. Even when I had space then, I still wouldn't move in front of them, simply because they were going faster than me. The next black car, top half of the mirror. As it gets closer, the car gets bigger. Now it's getting near the bottom half of the mirror, I definitely don't have space. The silver car is in the top half of the mirror and it's doing a similar speed to me, but it is catching and it is very close to the bottom half of the mirror. So I'm gonna let that one go. I'm not gonna change lane yet. 
The red car is small in the top half of the mirror, but it's catching me relatively quickly. It's already in the bottom half of the mirror, so I definitely didn't have time. The white van, though, is very small and in the top half of the wing mirror, and it's not really catching me very much. So I'm going to accelerate and change lane because I also have some space in front of me on this occasion too. That means I'm not pulling into a tiny little gap. I've still got a safe distance between me and the car in front. When you're waiting to change lane, it's important to try and keep with the flow of traffic. I saw that van behind. The van wasn't going much faster than me. I had space in front and I wasn't yet at the speed limit so I could accelerate. So I decided it was better to go a bit faster and stay in front of the van instead of slowing down and holding up traffic. What new drivers and particularly learners tend to do is when they're checking the mirrors to see if it's safe to change lane, they come off the gas pedal the car starts slowing down and everyone behind wants to overtake. That means there's loads of cars passing and rarely an opportunity to change lane. So at the moment, I'm stuck behind a truck in front of me. So all the cars behind will have the opportunity to pass me before I have an opportunity to get into that lane. The car approaching now is getting low in the mirror and they're going faster than me, so I'm not gonna pull in front of them. Another car from behind just decided to change lane so I haven't got an opportunity yet. But the van now is high in the wing mirror. I can see the entire front of the van in my interior mirror, and it's not really catching me. So now I can indicate, a few clicks of the indicator, quick sideways glance, and then I can change lane. I'm gonna move back to the left side, or the left lane, should I say, when I pass this truck. And I wanna make sure I leave a safe distance between me and the truck before I move back in. I will do the same thing. I will make sure that the truck is in the top half of my left wing mirror, but also I can see the entire front of the truck in my interior mirror. Then I know I have enough space. So now I'm indicating quick sideways glance and then I'm moving back to the left lane. Blind spots. Aren't blind spots important? Well, a sideways glance is more what you need on these kinds of roads. Let me demonstrate. I've got a black van approaching I'm gonna let them pass me on the right you can see them in the wing mirror now they're getting closer gradually I'll just slow down to help them catch up a bit more quickly and when it goes out of view in this mirror this wing mirror you'll see the van next to me pretty much at the same time it's still in the mirror still in the mirror still in the mirror I can st I can see it next to me and in the mirror at the same time so when there's one lane to your right, the lane next to you, or to your left, the blind spot is very minimal, if at all quite often. It's when you're looking at cars two lanes to the side, that's when there's a problem. I now want to talk about this blue car. I'm going to rewind this clip, try and see where the blue car is. Can't see it. Still can't see it. Nothing at all. The black van behind me is blocking my view of the blue car, which is why it's so important to change one lane at a time, because cars behind you in the lane next to you will block your view of cars two lanes to the side of you, and they could be coming quickly. But the problem may not be what you expect. Let's take this van two lanes across. It's in the mirror. I can see it in the mirror, still in the mirror. It's still in the mirror, it's going out of the mirror now and just as it goes out of the mirror, I can see it out of the corner of my eye. So it was never actually completely blind to me. Maybe there was the briefest of moments possibly. So two lanes across does have a bigger problem. There is a bigger blind area, of course. Your blind spots are bigger to the side of the car, but there's a much bigger problem than them being blind to you. And that problem is that they may also be wanting to change lane. You want to move to the middle lane and they want to move to the middle lane. And you knowing they're there somewhere in the corner of your eye doesn't help you with that because it's not very clear, it's vague. You know something's there, but it's hard to see if they're signaling and it's hard to see if they're changing position. But when you turn your head and look directly at them, it's clear, you know what they're doing, but also, if your vision is working correctly, you should have around about 180 degrees worth of view. 
So you're not only looking to the side, but you're also looking behind you too, which is important because although the van or the car doesn't really go out of view, you can all, always see it somewhere, you see it in your mirror or the corner of your eye, a motorbike can, they hide because they're smaller, much harder to see. So doing that quick sideways glance should help you spot smaller vehicles. A full on blind spot though like this, may be overkill because you may turn the wheel a little bit and well you don't want to do that when you're trying to keep it in your lane at high speed. Let's see how the passenger side blind spot compares. I'm passing this van, I can see them in the corner of my eye, I can still see they're there, I can still see them I can, and now I can't look in my mirror and they are there. A van is easier to spot than a car though. Let's try it with this car, this learner car. So. I can see the learner car in front of me. I can see them beside me. I can see them, I can't, I look in my mirror and they're there. What about a car that's two lanes away? I can see this Golf in the corner of my eye. I can still see them, I can still see them. I can't now, look in my mirror, not there, not now they're there. So they were actually out of view for a moment there as I was passing them. As you can probably guess, the blind spot on the passenger side of the vehicle is worse than the blind spot on the driver's side of the vehicle. And that's because the passenger side of the vehicle is further away, further away from where you're sitting, where your head is, where your eyes are. And blind spots get worse the further the object is from your side. There was a moment there when the car was in lane one and I was in lane three, so the car was two lanes away towards the passenger side of the car and I couldn't see it in the mirror or in the corner of my eye. I had to do a sideways glance to see it. And I couldn't see it out of this window. I could only see it out of this window and it was in the corner of my eye. It wasn't clear, but I did know something was there. Well, I hope this video helps. If you think it does, please give it a thumbs up. Check out Conningwood and Confused in the description if you're looking for car insurance. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, Collingwood are there for you because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy. And at the moment, via the link, there's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. If you want to insure your own car, check out confused.com because you fill out one quote form and get multiple quotes back from different insurers to compare who's cheapest. And you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like which is a really handy tool when you're trying to figure out what car to buy because you can compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio.